When we think of scary animals, most of us think of dinosaurs. They were big and tall. Some even had sharp teeth and claws or even horns. Some could fly, but as terrifying as this may sound, there have been many animals on this planet that were far more horrifying. These are 15 animals that were scarier than dinosaurs. Number 15. Quetzalcoatlus at the conclusion of the dinosaur age, Quetzalcoatlus ruled the sky of North America, flying far above legendary dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops. The largest Quetzalcoatlus species, which were as tall as a giraffe, were also the largest of all flying animals. They were the pinnacle of pterosaur development. Pterosaurs, or flying reptiles, created some of the world's biggest flying animals. Quetzalcoatlus was the largest and most famous of these flying monsters. Quetzalcoatlus is the most renowned member of the Asdarkids, a family of pterosaurs that lived between 144 to 60 million years ago and were named after the Mesoamerican god. The massive Quetzalcoatlus Northropi flew with a 33-foot wingspan. They took a four-footed jump off the ground, as do all flying reptiles. This launch method was backed up with a massive amount of force. Quetzalcoatlus's torso was thick and filled with enormous muscles, despite its tiny size in relation to its body. Notwithstanding being frequently portrayed in popular culture, it is relatively obscure. Q. Northropi fossils have always been rare, as a result it can only be rebuilt based on its near relatives. The skull of the species, for example, is unknown, therefore reconstructions are based on the head of a modern Q species. As a consequence, a creature that is a hybrid of two species emerges. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. Allow us to introduce you to the Gorgonopsia, one of the scariest animals to have existed. Known for their long and narrow skull, they have extremely elongated upper teeth that could deliver a seriously deadly bite. Modern anthropologists believe they were probably active predators. Imagine being the prey of choice for these things. Yikes. Looking like a weird blend between a saber-toothed tiger and a colossal dog, they were utterly horrifying to behold. As always, comment down below with the hashtag JuicyTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Number 14. Titanoboa Titanoboa, a gigantic snake that was formerly abundant, is now thankfully extinct. It was about 40 feet long and weighed nearly 2,000 pounds. This frightening monster, around 60 million years old, was unearthed in Colombia, where fossils were excavated and tested. However, this creature does not need to be worried about for the time being, until Jurassic Park features it and brings it back to life using some mad scientist DNA reconstruction. The snake existed during the middle to late Paleocene era. After the infamous Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, the dinosaurs were only the tip of the iceberg, as many other species were destroyed as well. In 2009, the huge snake was excavated by an expedition led by paleontologist Jonathan Block of the United States. Its fame reached new heights when a full-scale replica of a Titanoboa, one of the most terrifying animals ever, was shown in Grand Central Terminal in New York City as part of a campaign for the Smithsonian. Number 13. Helicoprion we no longer have to panic about the Helicoprion, a huge predator that became extinct approximately 250 million years ago when we are out swimming in coastal waters. Since the fossils were found, we have been able to piece together a compelling image of the beast known as the Helicoprion. As described after a discovery in Idaho, the gigantic fish grew to around 40 feet long. 
that makes this sea monster twice the size of a great white shark. Because of the shape of its teeth and jaw, the Helicoprion is known as the Buzzsaw Shark. Attempts were made to come up with an explanation for the whorl of teeth resembling a buzzsaw from the few bones and teeth that were found, and the whorl was moved to various places on the fish's body before it was finally, in 2013, accepted as a growth from the lower jaw which made this species a better predator. They also discovered that the Helicoprion was actually a type of ratfish rather than a shark, even though they are closely related. It was nevertheless the most successful ocean predator in its heyday, and one of the most bizarre looking fish around. Number 12. Tyrannosaurus Rex so how scary was the scariest dinosaur, in fact? Pretty scary, as we're about to find out. Tyrannosaurus rex, which means terrible lizard king, in Latin, that is, is perhaps the most well-known dinosaur of all. Even if it does have incredibly small arms, this is a very apt description of an all-powerful predator. If you ever come into this 40-foot-long, 13-foot tail bipedal dinosaur, don't worry about the limbs. It'll be the huge head loaded with sharp fangs that will be the biggest concern. Although other theropods grew to be somewhat larger than T-Rex, none had the biting force of this dinosaur, which is thought to be the most powerful bite ever. T-Rex is thought to have been an apex predator capable of taking down the largest prey, but some researchers believe it may have been a scavenger preying on the enormous carcasses of plant-eating dinosaurs. We also have a lot of evidence of this dinosaur, including almost entire skeletons and even soft tissue and proteins, indicating that this is one dinosaur we might be able to bring back to life one day. But would we be insane enough to want to? Number 11. Forcer Hacids Terror birds, as you may have guessed, are terrifying. These massive flightless birds existed for a long period, from about 62 million years ago until around 1.8 million years ago. They originated in South America, but they are the only big South American predator known to have crossed the Panama Canal into North America when the two continents were connected by the Isthmus of Panama. Because they could grow to be 10 feet tall, the people of North America were presumably not overjoyed to see them all arrive. They possessed an 18-inch long beak that curled into a razor-sharp hook like an eagle's, and they were very agile and fast, running at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. They lacked the biting force to take on huge prey, thus they likely focused on smaller species like rabbits that could be readily killed and devoured, but other scientists disagree. Referring to other top predators with weak bite forces like the Smilodon and the Great White Shark, it may have slashed at the necks of big animals with its beak like a knife before finishing it off with its massive talons. Truly terrifying. Number 10. Temnodontosaurus Temnodontosaurus is one of the earliest and biggest ichthyosaurs known to science. And while there are a few species connected with the genus, the size and proportions of the jaws are the most noticeable distinctions. Thymnodontosaurus fossils are so well preserved that they exhibit ammonite and cephalopod stomach contents, showing what they liked to eat. It has long been assumed that ichthyosaurs, like Thymnodontosaurus, gave birth to live young because their fusiform bodies which resemble those of fish, and would make it hard for them to clamber onto land. Other genera, like Ophthalmosaurus, have contributed to the confirmation of the idea of live birth in ichthyosaurs. Temnodontosaurs, like other big ichthyosaurs, are considered to have been a deep water marine reptile that only came to the surface to breathe fresh air. Temnodontosaurs would be able to discern ammonite shapes against the gloomy maritime backdrop thanks to its big eyes, which provide a large catch area for the limited light available. Aside from the ammonites found in Temnodontosaurus fossils, research on the teeth shows they possessed strong roots that could resist the pressure of cracking shells without breaking. Number 9. Dunkelosteus Here it is, the Dunkelosteus, the most iconic athrodire plesioderm fish of all time. This is a massive and bizarre-looking fish that resembles a cross between a snake and a shark. 
They existed in the late Devonian period around 358 to 382 million years ago and grew to almost 30 feet long with a weight of about 4.5 tons. They could open and close those terrifying and huge jaws at breakneck speed, just like modern day suction feeders, and with amazing power generating more than 1,600 pounds of pressure. North Americans, Poles, Belgians, and Moroccans should be concerned the next time they look at any water nearby, since this dreadful fish has only been discovered in these areas. The fish was named after David Dunkel, a well-known paleoichthyologist who studies ancient fish fossils. There are 11 species of the genus that we are aware of, but the largest, D. Terelli, is the most terrifying. Dunkelosteus, like other plesioderms, had a two-part bony armored shell, which might have made it a sluggish but strong swimmer. Dunkelosteus has two pairs of sharp bony plates that created a beak-like structure in place of teeth. Dunkelosteus, like most other plesioderms, may have been one of the earliest vertebrates to internalize egg fertilization, as some current sharks have done. Number 8. Andrew Sarchis between 45 and 36 million years ago, Andrew Sarchis existed in Asia during the late Eocene era of the Paleogene period, and fossils have been discovered in places like Mongolia. Andrew Sarchis was a member of the extinct Masonicids, a group of hooved carnivores related to even toad undulates and cetaceans. Only the animal's skull and a few other bones have been discovered so far, thus not all aspects of the animal's life have been revealed. For example, we are not certain whether it was an active predator or a scavenger. It has a massive head, a long nose with big fangs, including strong cutting teeth and flat cheek teeth that might have crushed bones, a lengthy body, a long tail, and short legs with hoof toes, according to legend. Because no full specimen of Andrew Sarchis has yet been discovered, the actual size of the creature is still a point of contention. It was about 12 feet long from head to pelvis, not including the tail, and it showed shoulders were maybe 6 feet off the ground. Its weight was almost likely between 400 and 1,000 pounds. However, exactly where it landed within the range is still a matter of contention. But one thing is certain, it was one of the biggest mammalian land predators to ever exist. Number 7. Basilosaurus the extinct Basilosaurus was a kind of cetacean. It lived between 40 and 34 million years ago, and its elongated serpent-like form, which could reach 60 feet in length, is instantly identifiable. Basilosaurus possessed a variety of unique characteristics, vestigial but considerably shortened hind limbs, likely not functional for propelling the animal but may be utilized as a guide during mating, extremely elongated vertebrae akin to snakes, and a skeletal architecture that implies it moved in an eel-like manner, were among these features. Basilosaurus, unlike contemporary whales or dolphin, lacked the melon organ, used by modern cetaceans for echolocation, and was likely incapable of deep diving. Basilosaurus fossils were originally discovered in Louisiana, but since then more have been discovered not only in the United States, but also in Egypt and Pakistan. The tale behind the finding of Basilosaurus is fascinating. Fossils of the animal were allegedly quite plentiful in Alabama and Louisiana, during the 19th century, so much so that locals utilized the bones to create furniture. Some fossils, on the other hand, were sent to the American Philosophical Society, where they were studied by Dr. Richard Harlan. Harlan studied the fossils and concluded that they were reptilian, giving the species the name Basilosaurus, which means King Lizard, or King Reptile in Greek. Sir Richard Owen then studied additional samples and decided that the animal was in truth a mammal. Number 6. Thiacosmolus Thiacosmolus looks a lot like saber-toothed cats like Smilodon with its large front teeth. The primary distinction between these two species of animals is that saber-toothed cats were placental mammals, meaning that their young developed while attached to a placenta through an umbilical cord and remained within the mother's body. Thylacosmolus, on the other hand, has a pouch into which young, called neonates, are born at an early stage of development and remain until they are ready to be out and about by themselves. 
Wythyla cosmolus resembled a saber-toothed cat. It belonged to the same family as contemporary kangaroos and the extinct thylacine, which is commonly known as the Tasmanian tiger. The enormous teeth of the Thylacosmolus might have been employed in a similar way to the saber-toothed cats. Thylacosmolus may have ambushed prey by either remaining low in the foliage or jumping onto it from above. Thylacosmolus might have delivered a deep bite into a vulnerable spot like the neck during these surprise attacks, severing arteries and causing fast blood loss. Although several Thylacosmolus hunting together is not an absolute impossibility, Thylacosmolus is generally represented as a lone hunter, and it could even have been a scavenger. Mothers would have hunted with their young still within their pouches, and they may have even joined them for a period of time when the young grew older. Number 5. Mega Piranha Mega Piranha is every bit as frightening as its name suggests. As if normal piranhas weren't frightening enough, the rivers of South America were formerly home to a much larger species known as Mega Piranha. They lived in Argentina's Iruzango formation between 10 and 8 million years ago. They were originally spotted in 2009, and all of the researchers must have felt a shiver go down their spines when they realized they had unearthed a 28-inch long piranha. They were estimated to weigh approximately 22 pounds, implying that an entire school of these fish would have been a force to be reckoned with, with their smaller modern counterparts known for being able to strip a cow to the bone in minutes. It's hard to imagine what would happen if you swam into these much larger monster fish. A mega piranha's biting force is estimated to be approximately 1,070 pounds, which is comparable to that of a tiger. However, there is one lingering difficulty with this conclusion. Mega piranhas only fossils are pieces of jawbone and a row of teeth from a single individual, indicating that there is still a lot more to learn about this Miocene threat. Number 4. Megalodon Here's a huge fish with a well-known modern cousin. The Megalodon is the Great White Shark's grandpa, and this monster, whose name means Big Tooth, lived between 23 and 3.6 million years ago, which is a pretty long time when you think about it. Although we only have fragmented remnants of this shark, they have allowed us to piece together a terrifying image of it. This shark is regarded to be one of the world's largest and most formidable predators, with the biggest fossil pieces coming from sharks that might have measured up to 67 feet long. This beast's biting force could well have reached 41,000 pounds per square inch, enough to rip a car in half. This was a predator that took on the largest prey in the ocean, with nothing standing in its way, the apex predator. It most likely hunted whales, seals, and sea turtles, and had a significant environmental effect. It was also ubiquitous, with fossil fragments found all over the world. Unlike the Great White, it did not try to target the soft underbelly of its victim, instead slamming through the ribcage, breaking all the bones, and crushing the heart in a devastating attack of sheer strength and force. Number 3. Harpagornis moray the Hast Seagull, or Heurastis moray, is now an extinct species of eagle that previously inhabited New Zealand's South Island and are thought to be the Puakai of Maori folklore. It was the biggest eagle to have ever existed, weighing 33 pounds compared to the 20 pounds of the Harpy Eagle. Its enormous size is thought to be an evolutionary reaction to the size of its prey, the flightless moa, which weighed up to 500 pounds. After the first Maori hunted the moa to extinction, Hast's eagle went extinct around 1,400. DNA study eventually revealed that this species is most closely related to the much smaller eagle, as well as the booted eagle, rather than the big wedge-tailed eagle as previously assumed. H. Moray is thought to have split from these smaller eagles between 1.8 million and 700,000 years ago. If this estimate is true, a 10-15 to 15 fold rise in weight is an extremely fast weight gain. The proposed rise in Hast's eagle's average weight over that time span would have been the greatest and quickest evolutionary increase in average weight of any known vertebrate species. The abundance of big prey and the lack of competition from other large predators 
helped make this possible. Despite their huge weight, the eagle's powerful legs and vast flying muscles would have allowed them to take off with a leaping start from the ground. Some think these birds go by the names Puakai, Hokioi, and Hakaway, and are mentioned in several Maori tales. Puakai is said to have killed people in certain Maori tales, which experts feel is conceivable if the name refers to the eagle, considering the bird's huge size and strength. Number 2. Smilodon the Smilodon, often known as the saber-toothed tiger, is one of the most well-known extinct creatures. It is, however, not closely related to tigers or any modern cats, and the Machairodont subfamily of fields has now been extinct. People of the Americas had to cope with the Smilodon until about 10,000 years ago. so they would have had to deal with this terrifying predator. The Smilodon was initially discovered in Brazil in 1842, but the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles have the greatest collection of Smilodon fossils. When compared to today's large cats, this was a strong cat with powerful forelimbs. It also possessed those massive upper canine teeth, as well as a larger mouth than modern cats. The fangs were employed for precise slaughter, plunging deep into the victim's neck in one strike, crippling or killing the animal quickly. The largest of them could weigh up to 960 pounds, and while we don't know what color coat it had, we've represented it as plain or speckled. Paleontologists believe it hunted by leaping from tree branches onto its prey. It then sank its fangs into its prey's neck as it landed. It would then allow its prey to bleed to death before returning to devour it after it was dead. Paleontologists aren't clear if Smilodon hunted in packs or if it was a lone cat at this period. Some of the fossils discovered were from cats who lived to be very old. Since they wouldn't have been able to do so without the protection of a group of cats, it appears that Smilodon Pelodon did, in fact, live in packs. Number 1. Platybelodon Platybelodon was a prehistoric animal that existed during the late Miocene period around 10 million years ago. It was found in the early 20th century and given its name in 1928, its name translates to flat tusk. Because Platybelodon was related to Amibelodon, it is possible that it utilized its tusks in a similar manner. Paleontologists believe it would have dug up marsh plants with its tusks and then moved it into its mouth. It's a hypothesis that's been popular since Henry Osborne proposed it in the 1930s. If it's accurate, it was a clever technique for it to get its food into its mouth, but it resulted in one seriously odd-looking creature. A fascinating detail about the Platybelodon is that the notion that it dug up plants with its lower tusk is now being debated. Paleontologists now believe Henry Osborne was mistaken. Some now assume these creatures chopped down tree branches with their bottom tusks instead. Platybelodon was around 10 feet long, 9 feet tall, and weighed about 2 tons. That indicates that it was about the same length and weight of a small car, not as large as modern elephants, but still pretty big. It would have been the same length and weight as a rhino, but much taller. Why did Platybelodon become extinct is one of the most often asked questions about this species. While scientists aren't sure why this animal became extinct, shifting climatic conditions during the late Miocene are thought to have caused a drought. This would have obliterated their feeding areas, thereby putting them out of business. Are you terrified by all these crazy animals from the past? Which is your favorite extinct species? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!